Welcome to Hemp Foundation Talks, where we listen to the heartbeats of the hemp industry and learn the celebrations, challenges, and discoveries from hemp leaders and advocates from around the world. I'm Rebecca, International Business Officer with Hemp Foundation and your host. Today's guest is Ramon Granados. Ramon holds a civil engineering and environmental degree from Florida Institute of Technology, USA, 1985. And he has a formal hands-on career development in planning and project controls engineering and project management with over 30 years of experience delivering EPCM engineering, procurement, construction, and commissioning projects, over $6 billion projects. In the last year, Ramon has been working in the industrial hemp business. He has founded and co-founded Hemp Engineering Private Limited, Biomass Engineering Private Limited, and Green Tigers Journal Private Limited. He is the advisor board member at Global Fiber Solutions, project director at the World Hemp Alliance, and former ambassador for Latin American Industrial Hemp Association to Australia. Asia. He is currently involved with hemp home building, plastic, textile, and batteries project in Malaysia, Thailand, Puerto Rico, Canada, USA, Uruguay, Paraguay, Argentina, and Australia. He was part of the team that organized and delivered the first hemp summit for Latin American in Montevideo, Uruguay in 2019. During the COVID times, he has organized and successfully launched many, many online events. From the Industrial Hemp, the Employment Maker, to Hemp Home Hemp Expo, USA Hemp Home Expo, Hemp Textile Expo, and Hemp Wellness Expo. He is currently organizing a summit for Africa and a second summit in Latin America and a Hemp Packaging Expo. Ramon has interviewed personalities and CEOs in the industry with over 100 hours of recording. And now it's his turn. Welcome, Ramon. It's such a pleasure to have you on the show, and we'd love to learn um, more about you and what got you into the hemp industry in the first place. Thank you, Rebecca, for this kind invitation to your show. Um, it's an honor for me to, yeah, to uh, talk to your audience and share some living experience of another human that believe that hemp is the answer for every challenge that we are facing in the humanity in this moment of history. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, what can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, tell me a little bit more about your journey. I know, I think from our conversation before, you were saying that you were in a different industry. You're in, in the oil industry and you have a background in, um, in, in that space. Can you tell me a little bit yes. more about, about that journey yeah. and what got you to switch into to hemp? Where, did, where was that yeah. light bulb moment that kind of had you change? Um, I hold three degrees of engineering. I'm a civil engineer, I'm an environmental engineer, and I was trained by the oil and gas industry in Venezuela as a planning and project, project controls engineer. So I basically uh, developed my, or, or my, my career um, in those three areas. I'm uh, working in, a project, in the project management team that used to design and build a, a oil and gas refineries. Okay. So um, uh, I graduated uh, from Florida Institute of Technology in 1985. Um, and uh, I would say that half of my family is American citizens. And, but uh, in general terms, um, I first touched uh, cannabis for the first time when I was 15 years old. I have dyslexia. And for one reason or another, weed have always helped me to focus. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really understand how it works in my brain or else, but. Um, I help me to focus. People with dyslexia, you, you make things in the brain and you do crazy erratic things. In this particular case, it helps me to, to focus and to stay disciplined in things that I do. Um, through the years, I have been an advocate of this plant. Um, in, like a decade ago, my mama had cancer in her breast. And I was in Holland uh, building, a, uh, designing a, 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 another refinery 
Mm-hmm. And, and then I learned about this oil and I didn't even know that you could do it. <laughs> but I knew it was how to smoke with that. <laughs> so that was it. Like, an, like an old hippie. I'll be 60 <laughs> years old in one, it's 25 of March. <laughs> So now it's like all connecting. Oh, there's more to this plant than just healing me. <laughs> well, well, I my mama was able to overcome the, the cancer and 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 oil and the cannabis oil helper to uh, push away the Parkinson that was a consequence of the of the of, of the radiation that mm. you get from from you know when you are when you have cancer. Right. So. Uh, so having said that, I saw the benefits and I saw the, the, the living thing. So life went on and in 2015, when I was getting divorced, looking something to do with my life, I decided to go to Denver, Colorado and, and, and uh, to NOCO. That was in uh, 2016, something like Oh, this. wow. So I went to NOCO um, and this plant, resonated me or I resonated on me. Mm-hmm. But I knew that what I had to do with the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I somehow the working knowledge as, as, as an engineer, uh, uh, be able to manage projects that are in the order of billions of dollars. So with that skills, I know that we will break through and accelerate the process of growing this industry beyond the romanticism that is in this moment. Everybody is romantic. Ah, what about what else? I want to do this. <laughs> but I, in my mind, we need to build cities. Yeah. Matter of health. We need to energize the whole supply chain yes. from the architects to the engineers to the standard of construction materials to everything that is related to this industry. Um, grow in parallel and have hundreds of projects and plants and benefit the farmers, benefit everyone around this beautiful plant that is for all. Amen. I'm with you. Preach it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I believe, Rebecca. That's I, what I believe. So uh, since then, in, two, in that same year, I met who is one of my business partners, one of the many, but he was the one that basically says, yes, Ramon, we should be in this business. And we asked all hippies, the hippies that kept the flame up of the knowledge of this plant, we should get a little piece of the new world order that is gonna come based on the cannabis as a center of, of a new life. Right. Because once we free the plant from, I don't want to say that we free the plant because that's not right. I want to say that when we uh, break down the walls of the capitalism that only protects industries that diminish the environment and is poisoning the planet mm-hmm. and let this plant compete for what we can actually do. Right. Then we're talking that we have won the right to make a better world for everyone. Mm-hmm. That's my thing. That's my yes. thing. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I love your passion. I mean, that's what we need more of. We need that Thank passion you. to make a bigger change, right? Um, so then COVID came and then I say, oh my God, what am I going to do? There is the economy is halt. Then I have a passion for organizing events. Mm-hmm. So then I started organizing events as a hobby. Let's see what happened here. I thought, you know, I'm an old man. You're a beautiful girl. Me, you know, I'm so <laughs> So I decided to start doing all those expos, doing interviews. So I done over 200 hours of interviews in the last two wow. years. Um, met a lot of extraordinary people. Yeah. Then I started doing organizing expos. So I do 
הם הום אקספו, הם טקסל אקספו, הם וולנס אקספו, now we're gonna do הם פקיג'ינג אקספו, and parallel I also do another show for more uh, elite education that is called uh, HEM, uh, HEM master classes. Okay. HEM master classes? Am, yes. And then I am also honored that one of my main supporters or sponsors is Carl Martel. It's a Canadian who has his brain behind most of the IPs that we have ever you know, created in the construction business. Since uh, we are working since we met, looking for a, an alternative to get the proper funds and make this happen. Yeah. But once again, Rebecca, uh, for whatever reason, the, we have come to this moment in, in history that the money is starting to flow. So I believe that many of these ideas if I were a company with you know enough funds, I would I would put that guy or the gentleman in a private airplane. I would bring him where I live, where I live, and then I could create a scientific hemp hub to get all those products up and running. Mm -hmm. But I believe that we are wasting too much time in this moment from the engineering point of view. I do understand. The process, the historic process, you know, the, the from Charlotte to now uh, is is being seven years or something. But a lot of things has happened in that time, very accelerated. But that's got the speed, so we need to jump in that speed and travel much faster with that because there are hundreds of millions of dollars in the market right now that they don't even know where to put that money for investment. Yeah. So we need, we need to create an army of architects, an army of engineers, an army of people that actually, you know, it's, this is part of the history itself. Because during 80 years, the United States have imposed a global dictatorship with the prohibition. So a lot of knowledge is in the air, a lot of, you know, it's more, well, I know this, but I keep it. So the only yeah. two people that have kept the knowledge of the plan are the countries that renegated that they did not accept to be under the prohibition boot, like, like China, like France, mm -hmm. like Algeria, very few countries. They were completely out of the prohibition. They told you that you say, no, we don't believe what you're doing. Mm. Cannabis is good. Yeah. But the rest yeah. submitted to the, the, to the dictatorship. 80 years of darkness. So mm -hmm. only two people were able to keep this up and running, the hippies and the narcos. Mm -hmm. Narcos are not gonna come out of the light because, come on. And the hippie has been screaming like crazy, but the elite, the, the not the elite, the prohibition have done such an extraordinary marketing mm -hmm. uh, to, to do this kind of stigma. Plus the trillions of dollars that the government on earth is spent in keeping this plan underground, uh, uh, I mean, uh, we don't need to be genius, no? Yeah. You give us money and we will do a better work, 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 work whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do. So, I mean, I hear what you're saying and I see what you're doing as far as bringing people together. And I think that's the way that we're gonna grow on a larger scale, right? Um, is, is building these communities of like-minded that we can do greater things, we can change systems, um, share our knowledge, and that's how we're going to go grow, right? More yes. as cooperating with each other versus uh, competing and holding information, like you were saying earlier. Um, but be open to share information so we can we can grow together, right? Um, I really that's, that's why that. I did the that's why the I did the Hemp Home Expo. So uh -huh. under one digital umbrella, we have the people that knows how to build hemp. We don't want politicians there. We don't want farmers there. We don't, no, no. They are part of the supply chain, but we, under one digital umbrella, where I brought the best of the best people in the United States and in the world that knows how to do, they, they know how to do uh, hem homes. Of course, it's romantic because one do 10 over the year, one do one over here, which is fine, but, 
from the engineering perspective, from an economical and financial perspective, we need an investor who said, oh, wait a minute, I have $100 million or $10 million, and I, we should start bringing this type of knowledge or health engineering, we bring it here, and let's start making this machinery to work. Mm -hmm. Because it's creating a new economy. It's a green economy. It's a circular yeah. economy. Yeah. Self-sustainable. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. So what is your vision being, being a man of um, project management and organizing things? Tell me a little bit more in, in, in a clear terms. What, what is your vision and how do you see um, ideally um, the industry to expand in a healthy way? way we need to create more farmers we need to create a proper industrial park for processing and we need the best marketers to to get those products that we are going to manufacture small and large and bring down the wall of the prohibition stigma mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without that anything that we do, we're going to be reaching just a little, little, little percentage of the, of the job that we need to do. Mm -hmm. And of course, I want to be, you know, happy engineering to become the preferred company to do this. <laughs> you want, what was that? I want hemp engineering to be the preferred company to deliver this. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking, you know, look, this is a whole composition of companies that are part of the economy that we want to build in Australia, in the United States. It yeah, is so you're, you're in Australia right now, right? Yes. We, didn't, yes. we didn't make that point clear earlier, I think, because you've been all over the world. <laughs> so, but you are currently in Australia. I live in Australia, in Perth, mm -hmm. yes. And with uh, a consultancy and support or assistance operations in in many countries. Yes. Yeah, I I, I saw you're doing um, an event also in Africa um, yes. coming up soon too, right? Do you want yes. to tell me a little bit more about that? Well, yes. Uh, actually, a good start that is 20 of April. We are doing the Latin American Summit that will be basically in Spanish. Oh. Uh, wow. The panel of speakers that I have that I have there is, is I am a little baby compared with their passion that they have. <laughs> in, um, but moreover, they are very young people, 25, 30, 50, you know, very beautiful uh, seeds to bloom. In, mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to do is just to put everybody to dance in the same page. <laughs> Nurture the yes. young seeds. That's that's our next generation, right? <laughs> yes. yes. And the same thing for Africa as well. Okay. So yes. April, the end of April is the one for Latin America, and then you're doing another one for Africa. 20, 20 of April, which is the cannabis global worldwide cannabis day for 20. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then in July, we have the African Summit. Yes. Okay. That mm -hmm. is in shape. I'm, I'm, I'm shaping it because it's not, I don't want to say that it's difficult, but it's more challenging because uh, there, are no, as, there are no as many pioneers as there are in South America, Europe, or, or North America, like mm -hmm. Canada, Mexico. So it's... Um, 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 Asia, of course, and there are hundreds of pioneers there. But yeah. not hundreds, but, uh, but over there is emerging, it's different. It's uh, uh, Europeans are coming to establish their, their companies there because there are there is no uh, local local engine to make this happen. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that all this is a global community where we all should be part of it. What I don't really uh, good enjoy is looking at repeating the same perverse capitalism idea of colonization. 
Mm -hmm. where a company comes in with the intention of exploiting the people so that they can still have a good life from, you know, wherever they are. That's mm -hmm. not the intention. The intention mm -hmm. is that this abundance that this plan can provide can feed, clothe, and provide shelter for the local people as well. Yeah. Or primarily. Yeah, so helping all of these um, more marginalized communities to be able to have an opportunity to grow with this plant and kind of reverse things, right? It, from what you're saying from the capitalistic way to um, to a different way of doing things with this plant and the opportunity that we have to, to help these communities and, and things, right? We have um, also Erin Lindy, who is a uh, hand food specialist. Okay. Our idea is to feed the world. Oh my God, we can go crazy with this. In our team or or in, in my 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 closest collaborators or people that are believe or they have the same frequency as we are talking. Yeah. Is uh, Johan in Thailand. He's the president of the Malaysian Association. I mean a good uh, uh, Karen Castañeda in Colombia, or Diego Belsol in Argentina, uh, or you all in, 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 in Spain. So we could go crazy, the work that all oh, that NOCO is doing in the United States. Jean Lotus in, with, the, uh, with their construction uh, build, builder, hand builder magazine. I mean, I could go on and on and on. It is, this is something that I dream that we all, you know, work. In, as one. Yeah, for sure. There is so much work to do just to break down the walls of the provision. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about the um, diagram in the background there. <laughs> 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 is that your, your kind of circular approach there? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> What's and on actually, the bottom? I can put it like this and also say <laughs> from soil, soil to soil. soil. Awesome. <laughs> so that's what we were. I tell you, I never actually told this to Darren Herrer, the son of Darren Herrer. I I met him also in, in I met him in Nepal. Oh wow. The, uh, yes, I met also the, the big players in the business in that uh, uh, summit. It was the Asian summit. And uh, I also made more read, so it could be a, a long story. Anyway, I, uh, I, <laughs> I'm sure you have lots of stories. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> well, we'll have to have you back on the show for part two and, and uh, just to have a talk story time and hear all the stories. <laughs> I can tell you a lot of stories. So, look, um, so we were talking and we were talking, and when I was talking to him, I was seeing this universe of things that we can, but how do I put this together? So a month after, I put this together. <laughs> <laughs> but I was an inspiration from talking to, to, to Dan, Dan here, who has been in two times in our expos. I'm very grateful of his assistant. It's different, it's Stephen Cutter, who is the president of the War Head Association, has been outstanding support. Mary, uh, Mardi Ken in, in Colorado. I mean, it's long, long, it's a lot of Jeffrey Tan, Sarai, Sarai uh, Garrett. And I have to mention the person that I mentioned first, mm -hmm. Hans Kowalski, that we went to university together. I know him almost for 40 years. Awesome. <laughs> so it takes a community, right? It takes, yes. it takes an, an army. <laughs> That's right. A hemp yes. army. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So um, the idea is to build homes, mm -hmm. cities, um, uh, where each city has uh, our hemp batteries, or the ones that we are intending to buy to build with Clayton, Clayton mm -hmm. Turner. Yeah, uh, I just had uh, an interview with him before you, so that'll come out soon. You have to watch that. He's, he's brilliant. <laughs> yes, yes, he is, he is, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I respect him a lot and I, yes, I have no only good word for him. 
and good yes. witch of the coast. It's a young man, very brilliant, very passionate. Yeah, he really moves. <laughs> I love that guy. That's what we need. It's like car when I talk to car, it's all the He's 70 years old, my lady. And he is last night I was um, in a uh, last night. I was invited uh, by by Mr. Dixon. Some don't remember. He's the guy that built uh, the hemp car in in Florida. He is oh, wow. putting together a team for X Prize. Who are well, I spent some time working there, you know. But I felt that there were people that had more time than me to to assist. And now you know, now it's another team for for a one billion dollars grants that the government is intent the federal government is intending to do uh, for 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 this so yeah there is a lot of work to do <laughs> now is the time right <laughs> yes, yes, yes i yes. feel it i feel like there's you know just been this you know being from hawaii i like to, the imagery of of surfing and the waves so it's like this big, huge wave is sucking up, and now it's time for us to ride this wave. Yes, <laughs> ride yes. <this> shore. <laughs> yes, yes. And listen, from the engineering perspective, I see him as a technological race mm -hmm. because everywhere you grow. Everywhere on the planet, every region, everybody with the proper technology could be able to transform the plant into something, yes. to work on something. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the amount of money, investment, vision, long-term vision, the hundreds of possibilities that we can discuss in terms of engineering, which is relevant. What is relevant is that at the end of the day, all countries want to do the same. Mm -hmm. So it is a technological race. It's not even countries, I shouldn't call countries, it's about companies. Because any person, my thinking, any company that comes into this industry without having a global vision or having only a nationalistic or regional uh, uh, idea or concept of the business, shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. This is not what we need. We need a company in Washington DC with connections in India. And we want like, uh, one in, uh, in, in Ottawa here with connections in Perth that we all can work yeah. in a community, yeah. sharing the information that we need to lift up the technologies of everywhere we are so we can build with more, uh, uh, faster, yeah, with, with the good quality within mm -hmm. the budget. Uh, moreover, with with the intention that lasts for a long time. Yes, I I agree, and I think you hit a very important point, um, Ramon. That you know we need to have that that global um, mindset, and and yes, we have to be good stewards domestically and where we are at too. But how can we work together? Uh, globally, um, I think it's very important and to learn from each other, to share information, um, to connect more. And I'm, I'm really thankful um, to have this time to talk with you and to learn, you know, what you're doing to build that community and to, to help us to grow even further, you know, as, as an industry that is, that has an opportunity to do something that's much more valuable for for society for our health i mean you know all the many different values um that hemp brings to the table so um thank you so much and i appreciate your time and if there's any last minute words that you want to say <laughs> i would be glad to have you back on on the show again some other time we can, anytime, we can dive anytime. into the stories <laughs> what i would like to say is um uh, to the politicians, let's change the law. To the people that can bring um, money to the table, let's talk. And to the people that can actually help us, let's rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Thank you very you. much. Rebecca. Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Hemp Foundation Talks. Hemp Foundation is a nonprofit social enterprise on a mission to provide solutions for our current ecological crisis. Hemp Foundation and their brand, Uki, has created a value chain from village farms to the marketplace. Utilizing the many benefits of hemp to overcome deforestation, fight plastic pollution, and support regenerative practices to heal our earth. The Foundation supports over 250 small village farmers in the Indian Himalayan region. In addition, they employ widows and women in the production of over 500 hemp products for the marketplace. From clothing, to food, to hemp bags, a large range of textiles, embroidered fabrics, home goods, and even hemp bioplastic. To learn more, visit hempfoundation.net.